What is unique in man is that he's the only animal that can be a killer and a destroyer of his own species without any rational gain. Obviously, we see this in the Nova Scotia shooting in Canada. In the book, The Anatomy of Human Destructiveness, Eric Fromm points out that the malignant aggression doesn't serve any physiological survival of a human. It's different from another kind of aggression, the benign or defensive aggression, which is impulse to attack or to flee when our vital interests are threatened. However, it will stop once the threat stops. Man was defined as a rational being, but also were the only animal we can be driven by the impulses to kill and to torture, and at the same time, we can feel the last in doing so. But why is that? As a human being, our behaviors are little guided by our instincts. Aside from some elementary reactions, such as those to danger or to sexual stimuli, there is no inherited program that tells us how to decide in those instances. Man is guided by his intellect to make choices. It's the human brain with its capacities for memory, learning, communication, imagination, creativity, and the powers of self-awareness that distinguishes humanity. Man is the only animal who not only knows objects, but also who knows he knows. Man is also the only animal who has the capacity to reason, to use thinking to understand objectively. Gifted with self-awareness and reason, man is aware of himself as a being separate from nature and others. He is aware of his powerlessness, of his ignorance. He is aware of his end, death. Self-awareness, reason, and imagination have disrupted the harmony that characterizes animal existence. For animals, periods of rest and activity succeed each other in an unchanging rhythm, fixed by the needs for food or sleep, reproduction or protection. Their instincts provide them with a map as well as with goals. Human being, on one hand, we lack the instinctive determination. On the other hand, we have a brain permit us to think of all kinds of directions. So now we need a focal goal to devote our energies, our strivings, and as the basis for all our behaviors. The objects of man's devotion vary. He can be devoted to the growth of a life or to its destruction. Our awareness of living in this overpowering world is really scary, makes us feel impotent. As human beings, that's very overwhelming. So we need to effect, we need to make a dent, we need to show that we are functioning human beings. We have to do something. So, the need for devotion itself is a primary existential need, demanding fulfillment regardless of how this need is fulfilled. We must satisfy our bodily needs in order to survive. However, the satisfaction of our organic drives alone don't make us feel happy. The major motivations of human beings are in our rational and irrational passions. The strivings for love, reason, justice, freedom, and the truth. We call them life-furthering syndrome, as well as the drive to control, to submit, to destroy. We call them life-thwarting syndrome. All that makes life meaningful and worth living. The author said that, the average person is a blend of both syndromes. What matters and what decides the behavior or the possibility of change is the respective strengths of each syndrome. To understand malignant aggression, one has to understand character, because different passions are rooted in different characters. A person's character is formed by his family, his culture, and the society he lives in. And there are so many factors 
will determine the way how his character will develop during his course of life, especially the early course of life. So it's a very complicated issue. But here, what I wanted to talk is the society. Individuals live in a society that provides them with ready-made patterns that pretend to give meanings to their lives. For instance, in our society, we're told that to be successful, to raise a family, to consume goods and pleasures gives meaning to life. For most people, these suggestions work on the conscious level, but deep in our heart, we cannot stop feeling the emptiness. Do these suggestions really bring the genuine sense of meaningfulness? Suggestibility is based on the powerlessness of the individual and on one's lack of independent critical thinking. Man's reason and will are powerful factors in the process of one's development. The shooting had already happened. What we can do maybe is to do some deep thinking, to make some effortful work within ourselves, acquiring some insights, examining what passions we're following, and to learn how to make our passions toward the life furthering direction. The book, The Anatomy of a Human Destructiveness is a very intriguing and a very penetrating book. I cannot finish the book in one breath. I have to read, pause, read, ponder. And uh, there's so much insights inside. Uh, I'll put the link for the book below. For people who want to learn Mandarin, you can click the link, go to my Chinese channel to watch the Chinese version of this video. And uh, take care, everyone.